the head of state did issue additional containment measures targeting um, five counties of uh, Nakuru, Kiambu, Nairobi, uh, Machakos, and Kajiado. Now this did not mean that uh, the other 42 counties have managed to contain the spread of the virus. It only meant that those five have the highest disease burden. If you look at the statistics of yesterday, I think yesterday we had um, about a thousand, was it 2,000? 2,008 of those that had tested positive for the virus, and out of which about a, th a thousand and some number there, about 1,017, actually from Nairobi. And the others are spread in the other four counties. And therefore, those five, five counties actually account for more than 50% of all infections. This does not in any way mean that uh, the other 42 counties are better. And you did recall that the head of state was very clear that they must continue to observe uh, the containment measures that have been put there before. We are all aware that uh, corona in one place is corona in every place. And therefore, we must all work together to be able uh, to contain this pandemic. And we wish to thank Kenyans, really, for having uh, the understanding that this pandemic can only be effectively contained if all of us play our part in protecting ourselves and protecting others. Now, for better adherence to the containment measures enumerated in the public order number two of 2021 uh, that were um, given out yesterday by the head of state, we wish to clarify and offer more details on certain issues. The first one is the issue of restriction of all movement by road, rail and air in and out of the counties of Nairobi, Machakos, Kajiado, Kiambu and Nakuru. These five counties have all been a group together into a zone. Um, they are one entity according to the latest containment measures. This was clarified yesterday by the Chief of Staff, Mr. Waita. But I just wanted to offer a bit more information regarding this. The first information that I wish to, to offer that the movement will not be restricted between Nairobi, Kiambu, Nakuru, Nairobi Kajiado, Nairobi Machakos. But movement will be restricted from all the surrounding counties into this zone. And therefore there will be roadblocks that will be mounted and manned by the police to ensure that there is no movement in and out of the zoned area. Now areas where the roadblocks will be mounted, uh, I have them here. I will not read them out because there are many, but one thing for certain is that uh, there will be no area that will be left unmanned. And therefore we are calling on our people really to be able to help in terms of uh, observing these measures because these measures are not really there to hurt anyone. They are not there to undermine anyone. They are not there to make the life of anybody difficult. They are there to protect ourselves. So the idea of playing hide and seek with the police really should be something that we should not engage into, as people who are concerned about their well-being. And therefore, we are appealing <coughs> and urging Kenyans that let's observe this and work together with the law enforcement agencies for the betterment of our society. We are aware, really, as a government, we are not lost. It's not lost to us about the fact that there are many individuals who might have been caught unawares, who might have traveled out of the zoned area, who might have traveled inside into the zoned area. And therefore, in its wisdom, the government has given out a transition period, whereby you know, people who had moved out of the zoned area for one reason or another, or had moved into the zoned area for any reason, will be allowed to move out or to move back into the zoned area. And therefore, the trans session period uh, will last until tomorrow by curfew time. And therefore, if there is somebody who is in Eldoret and wishes to move to Nairobi, he should be here by tomorrow curfew time. 
if anybody is in Nairobi and wishes to move to Mombasa, he should also be able to move and to, uh, between now and tomorrow uh, curfew time. I think that is very clear. Uh, that applies to any movement of anyone who uh, was caught unawares and has to travel back or travel out of the containment, or sorry, or on the uh, uh, zone area. I'm also aware that uh, people have been concerned about uh, students who are in college outside the uh, zone area. Again, this applies to them as well. And therefore, anybody who is to travel by uh, road, by rail, or by air, they have a window or until uh, tomorrow curfew time. However, for air and SGR, the window is being extended to Monday, midday. For those who have got SGR tickets, have got air tickets, they will be allowed to use them until tomorrow midday beyond which now all SGR operations will be suspended and all domestic flight will also be suspended. International flight will nonetheless uh, not be suspended. The other clarification I want to offer is regard, with regard to passes. I know journalists have got passes that allow them to operate beyond curfew time. You know, there are those who read news past, 11, I mean, past 10 o'clock or even past 8 o'clock in the new regulations that have been given by the government. Now, you will continue to use the old passes until uh, new passes are issued, and this will be done by Tuesday next week. And the procedure of application remains the same that was used to offer the passes that you're currently uh, using. Now, international flights are not affected by these regulations. They'll continue, people will continue to come into the country. Our people and others will continue to fly out of the country. However, those who come into the country must be able to abide by the COVID-19 protocols, meaning that uh, for any traveler coming into Kenya must be able to have a COVID-19 negative certificate that must have been obtained 96 hours before travel. We are also aware that within the same, there are uh, tourists who already had bought tickets to come into the country. They are free to come into the country. There are also others who might have done some booking and asking them not to cancel those bookings. So when they get into the country beyond Monday, when uh, domestic flights will have been suspended, they will be allowed to hire a private uh, planes upon a clearance by the Kenya Civil Aviation. So uh, for those who want to travel into the country, there is a uh, provision that you can be able to travel into the country, hire a plane upon clearance by the Kenya Civil Avi Aviation. I know they will be concerned, certainly, about some of our people who come to largely Nairobi for specialized treatment. Now, such cases will be handled case by case. And for those who will be requiring to travel to Nairobi for specialized treatment, they are advised to produce a document of referral and also obtain clearance from the nearest police commander. So yes, this is again a window that these laws are not meant to harm our people. They're not designed to hurt anyone. And therefore, there is that provision that if you are to get medical treatment in Nairobi and there's a referral letter, you have produced that letter and be able also to get uh, clearance from the commander near you. And certainly, the policeman in the roadblocks will be able to assist you. They are our people. And they'll be able to understand your case and provide certain guidance to allow such individuals to be able to be attended to. The other issue also is about the uh, sporting activities. Sporting activities remain suspended until further notice. And I'm saying this because I'm aware about our Olympic 
team that is currently preparing to go to Japan. But uh, things are now that ac according to the directive issued by the head of state, all sporting activities remain suspended. I also wish to make clarification regarding uh, physical gathering for worship in churches and mosques. These have been suspended within the zone area, meaning that in the areas of Kajiado, Machakos, Nairobi, Kiambu, and Nakuru, physical gatherings have been suspended. However, physical gathering for worship can go on in the other counties while observing the COVID-19 containment measures, which include allowing only one third of the capacity of the venue. I'll explain a little further. If your venue can only accommodate 200 people, then that, a third of that is 60. If the venue can be able to accommodate 1,000 people, then a third of that is only 300. And I want to thank uh, the clergy for having adhered to this, but we are asking them to be able to continue to ensure that this is observed to the letter. Because at the end of the day, we are protecting our lives. In order for a service to go on, you need people. And while we understand that this may be disruptive, but it's only for a while, so that we can be able uh, to take care of our health, we can be able to protect our, our neighbors, our families, and our friends, so that uh, when this is all behind us, then we can be able to resume our normal uh, lifestyle. Allow me, can I remove this? You should allow me. Um, yeah, alone. 